Hey guys, welcome to VR Essentials today. Very cool video as so we're going to be using the Pico 4 and putting it through its test or its paces to see whether you could actually watch a movie with this guy. And also, of course, I'm going to give you my thoughts in terms of the comfort, what it was like to actually put this headset on for whatever amount of hours it was, and whether I was able to watch the movie until the end, as we will be using the virtual desktop, which had an update a couple of weeks or three ago. And, you know, just wanted to see what differences there were also in big screen with virtual desktop and the Pico 4, because we did do a other video and do go and check out that video where I was using the Pico 4 in standalone mode to test out whether it was true, whether you could use the battery for 2.5 hours after putting this guy through its paces for around, you know, a good couple of hours, uh, sorry, good couple thousand of hours over the last eight months or so. So guys, I will also give you, of course, all my feedback in terms of the graphics, the compression, uh, you know, all these kind of different things. So guys, are you ready to go into big screen? Let's go. All right, so let's just check the battery first. We're at 98% here. I uh, just turned to 98. I charged it. It was uh, uh, about two minutes ago, so five past 11 before I switched on the actual headset on. So let's just go to library, and then we're going to go to uh, virtual desktop. So let me just search for it. Virtual. There we go. Virtual desktop. All right. So we're inside a virtual desktop. So you can see 97% up there also. In terms of the streaming, I'm going to leave it about 195 Mbps, so it's not too fast. Video buffering reduces occasional stutters. Okay, we leave that on. This one we're going to switch off because it creates some issues whenever I use it. Uh, and also, uh, show before, uh, increase video nominal range. This I'm going to leave off also. Uh, in the settings, I'm going to uh, boost clock rates. I'm going to switch this off because I'm not going to record that often, to be honest with you. Uh, so what we then do is we go to uh, games. And then we're going to launch. We're going to launch. Uh, big screen. By the way, for those who are not familiar, Virtual Desktop is a software available to download and purchase that you stream from your PC any Steam VR game, or you can even control it remotely your PC directly from your VR headset. You can also play not only VR games from Steam VR, for example, but also any pancake game or non VR game within a virtual reality environment that's provided to you or built for you, modeled for you by virtual desktop which is pretty freaking amazing there are a whole bunch of different environments that you can use which is pretty pretty cool but big screen for those who are also not familiar is basically a virtual social media platform enabling you to watch your favorite movies and also like similarly to virtual desktop control your pc directly from the actual app itself in vr so effectively you do not need to remove your vr device in order to press and control your pc you can do that completely remotely it's absolutely amazing you can also of course play anything you want as it will stream all your favorite different things from a pc directly within the virtual environment and there are a whole heap of different environments to choose from as well of course from a private cinema a private condo room and all these kind of different things but the biggest difference between of course virtual desktop and big screen is big screen provides you the ability to socialize with other people and have private rooms with up to 15 or more people depending on the device that you have have in creating some special events privately or openly so it's pretty pretty cool i will put some timestamps below the like button in the description of the video to let you know exactly where i check the time in relation to the actual recordings that i do inside of the app now the actual setup of itself to do the hosting of the room choosing the room and all these kind of different things is pretty fast it only takes about five or six or seven minutes or so you can also choose to see whether you want people to be able to talk or you can mute them you can have complete control on the room itself you can kick people or you you can ban them completely if you really don't want them to be able to come back in as it is quite well not often the case but sometimes the case some people will come to the room and you know just disturb the peace unfortunately it's just the way it is you can also of course name the room name the description of the room choose a category and all these kind of different things make it public maybe make it, make it private or whether you just want to be on your own in the room itself or if you want to give you know when it's private you can give the key or the code access to a specific amount of people for them to join and no one else will be able to join 
unless they have that key. Now the movie that we're going to be watching today is Transformers Rise of the Beasts. So the latest Transformers movie that is. And I have to admit that it is pretty... Well, I'm going to let you know whether we were actually able to watch the entire movie before the battery actually depleted. Because in the previous video, and do go and check out the video... As you will be able to tell, well, the battery did not last the full number of hours as advertised for me after using the headset for a good, you know, couple thousand of hours after eight months or so. So I was really curious to see whether we would be able to watch the entire movie. If not, well, people were just going to be disappointed as, of course, people kept coming in and out of the room. It was really awesome to be able to talk with them. Although during the movie, what I did is I actually muted everybody so no one could really disturb the other or, you know, sometimes some people will come in and give you some spoilers or tell you the end of the movie and when you just started to watch it, it's not very cool, but, you know, it's just the way it is. And also for the purpose of this video, just to let you know that I did not actually use any of the sound or the volume from the headset itself, I patched the volume directly to my computer and then plugged some headphones into my speakers as I really wanted to have the best audio as possible. And unfortunately, I did want to deplete the actual battery faster from the headset itself and really give myself as much let's say room as possible to make sure I could watch the movie until the end without any excuses whatsoever. So do take note of this as if you were to put headphones inside of the headphone jack or you know if you were to use let's say Bluetooth headphones which for movies by the way is perfectly acceptable. Normally the latency using Bluetooth will be okay. You'll be able to watch everybody. The mouse will move to the sound so it won't look weird. Don't worry about that but it will deplete the battery faster so do you know take note of that as it means that potentially the end of the movie may stop well the movie may stop before the actual end of the movie so you know do as i said do take note of this now the question you perhaps may be asking yourself is well why would i want to watch movies inside a big screen and not inside of the actual pico 4 standalone headset itself well first of all the standalone doesn't yet offer you the opportunity to watch movies with your friends and family at the time of this recording as far as I know anyway and also the actual cinemas and environments provided inside of the Pico 4 honestly speaking are left to be desired a lot of the environments are very blurry you can't really have the flexibility to choose your own seat as to where you want to sit exactly the lighting the atmosphere all these kind of different things are just really subpar to be honest with you big screen really offers you there's nothing like it as far as I know that offers you the immersive experience as if you really were inside of a cinema which is freaking amazing you can have popcorn soda and all these kind of different things and things to play around with all the different tools that are available there and the fact that you can talk with your favorite friends live there in the movie or during the movie or you can host other kind of different events if you don't want to specifically do a event night or movie night excuse me you know you could do sports night or chat night or a whole bunch of different things is freaking freaking amazing to me it really blows my mind the other thing that really blew my mind was actually the graphics and the latency as to how well Virtual Desktop did in streaming the movie inside of big screen. So both big shout out to big screen for having specific servers that enable you to stream things without having that choppiness or compression, as well as, of course, Virtual Desktop and Gigodan and his team for delivering an amazing job in making sure that all the images that come onto the screen and inside, of course, of the actual VR app itself provides an immersion that is really really top-notch because i was actually sitting about 10 meters away from the router with a wall and a door in between the router that i'm using is an xt8 by asus which is absolutely phenomenal in terms of what it can deliver with its wi-fi 6 technology the only thing that i would say is and actually sorry before i go into this is the movie was streaming at 720p not even 1080p which is freaking amazing comparing what i was seeing today to let's say a year or two years ago is completely just uncomparable to be honest with you the fact that you know, the only thing that was missing a little bit are, I would say, the dark areas inside of the movie itself. I could definitely see a little bit of pixelation here and there, a little bit of compression there, but honestly speaking, nothing that really made me feel like I wanted to switch off the movie or I was just having a bad experience. Not at all. And also during the clair the clarity 
points. That means the points that were the brightest. Yes, I could see a little bit of screen door effect there on the actual screen of the movie, not inside of big screen theater environment. So it was a tiny, teeny bit little noticeable here and there. But again, nothing to make me feel like, oh no, I have to stop the movie or I was having a bad experience of any kind. I was really blown away by the graphics. It was just absolutely amazing. There were no jagged edges anywhere. Everything was very good. I mean, you can also, by the way, turn on the anti-aliasing option inside a big screen, which will definitely help a lot to stop a lot of these various different jagged edges and flickers around the theater itself. So honestly speaking, really, really amazed. Really, really amazed. Now there was a bug at some moment where the controllers had a little bug there. They seemed to block themselves and one of the hands just you know, I couldn't move the hand. It got stuck in one specific pose, pointing a pointer up for some reason. Not quite sure what was going on there. That was a little bit weird. And I tried to go out of the app, come back into the app, and that didn't seem to do any effect whatsoever. So not quite sure, you know, what happened there. But anyway, that is a bug that it did occur. The other bug that sometimes occurs is when you change your avatar, which you can do. You can completely fully customize your avatar, by the way, inside a big screen. The driver on my PC would actually change or would actually create some echo inside of big screen, which meant that I had to change the driver, then go back to the big screen driver in order to rectify that, which, you know, was fine because it didn't actually occur that too often. It only happened, I think, once or twice here and there. But do be aware that there can be some driver issues here and there, perhaps using the Pico 4 or maybe another headset. I would have to test it with the Pico, uh, sorry, with the HP Reverb G2 and the DPVR E4 to see whether there are similar issues with those drivers as well. Now guys, the good news is I was able to watch the movie. We had about 15 people at one time for quite a while inside of the room and I did manage to finish watching the entire movie. The Pico 4 did not let me down on this occasion, which is freaking amazing. But do stay on as I will let you know exactly how many minutes the Pico 4 lasted before it did give up on me. But it did make the full fledge. So I was really, really happy about that. I had enough time to go and check out the 3D trailers room in fact, which is really cool. I mean, watching 3D movies inside a big screen is mind blowing everybody. So there you have it, guys. This is uh, honestly, it took me by surprise as in the previous video and do go and check out that video. Um, you know, the actual battery life that lasted when I was using the Pico 4 in a standalone mode, that means no virtual desktop, no PC VR or whatever uh, of any kind, the battery actually did not last as long. So I was very, very surprised that the battery lasted as long as it did, and I'm going to tell you right now how long it lasted, it did indeed last pretty much the full two hours and a half watching the movie in big screen. So if you are looking to watch movies inside the big screen or host some events of your own for your friends, for your family, or for your events for your company or something, which I think would be pretty cool to be honest with you, then this guy is definitely not a bad choice whatsoever. I was very, very well surprised. Uh, as I said, based on the previous video, and do go and check out that video uh, where I was doing the standalone test and the battery just did not last this long. If you want to know how long it lasted, however, playing all the various different games inside of the Pico 4 without virtual desktop, without the PC, then you go, you have to go and watch that video, everybody. But yeah, frankly, not bad, good experience. The only thing I would say is, well, you know, of course, I didn't use any sound inside of the headset. I did outsource the sound to speakers that were hooked up inside of my computer. So it definitely is possible that, you know, of course, if you take the sound straight from the Pico 4, um, that indeed it will, it will definitely eat up some of the battery, but I still feel pretty confident that you could at least watch a full uh, movie inside of VR in big screen using your virtual desktop, uh, even if your uh, sound is gonna be hooked up here into the USB-C or whether you're gonna be using Bluetooth headphones so and also by the way bluetooth headphones is not bad in terms of the mouth you know how the latency is actually pretty good you won't really notice it when you're watching a movie if you're using bluetooth uh, bluetooth fails really when you're playing games like beat saber or you know these kind of games where ragnarok where you're, you're hitting things very fast then bluetooth is not really ideal for it but for movies and things of these kind of sorts is completely okay to use bluetooth in my mind anyway but yeah guys really not really not bad the compression was pretty good the graphics were pretty good. I was pretty impressed overall with this headset. So would I use this headset to watch movies? 
Actually, yes, why not? I mean, I know the Meta Quest 3 is coming out, you know, in six months or in a few months' time, in October or so. Um, but, you know, if you are looking for a device now, today, to watch movies uh, without having all the cables running everywhere, in big screen, that is, using your PC VR headset, then, yeah, I think this is not too bad. Uh, the comfort can be okay. It can be improved, of course, because it feels quite uncomfortable for me after one hour and a half. But, you know, there are ways to make it better for you. So there you go, guys. Smash the likes, hit the notification bell. Let me know in the comments what you think and whether you watch movies also using this headset. Love to know. And whether you want me to do more videos like this, testing the battery power with various different apps. Smash the likes. Let me know if we do more than 30 likes. And of course, it tells me that you want me to do more of these kind of videos. All right, guys. Take it easy. I'll see you in another video very, very soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye-bye.